Hello, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to my June and July show and tell. I did not make one of these show and tell videos last month because I was taking a YouTube break, which I will talk about more in a moment. But first, show and tell is basically like a, it's usually monthly favorites wrap up, the kind of video where I talk about what I've been up to, what I've been loving, things I've been using and enjoying. I tend to spend a lot of time in these videos on makeup, nail polish, and tarot and oracle decks. So if that is your thing, you'll probably enjoy this. I have a lot of things to talk about today because it's two months worth. So let me just jump right in and start off with memories. So as I mentioned, I took a YouTube break. This was mostly at the insistence of my wife who realized when we were talking that I hadn't really ever taken a intentional break away from making YouTube content. I've absolutely taken breaks, but I've always pre-filmed for them, made sure content went on the channel so that everything was pure and consistent. And I just was having a weekend and, and mentioned at the weekend that I felt like I'd been editing all weekend or something. And I love what I do here, but Peggy Peggy was like, have you ever taken a break? And I was like, well, yeah. And she's like, but have you ever taken a break and like not made content during that break or in advance of that break? And I was like, no. And she's like, let's look at your content schedule. And so she sat down with me and we moved things around and I took an actual full week off of making YouTube content. And it was great. First time, five years. Awesome. Loved it. It was fun. I played video games. I just took a little vacation. And I love what I do for YouTube, don't get me wrong, but it was really nice to just take a little breather. And at the end of it, I remember telling Peggy, like, this was such a good idea. Thank you so much for suggesting it. And then like a week later, after getting back on track with my content and I had a really lovely extra long live member reading stream for my Magical Unicorns and Up where I did live member readings, it was fabulous. And the day that I did ma Magical Unicorn and Up member readings, I woke up with a little bit of a sore throat. <laughs> Two weeks later, I'm still trying to kick the last bits of this summer cold. It has absolutely knocked me on my butt. So even though I took like a week off in like early July to get a little breather <laughs> from YouTube, I ended up taking another two weeks off. So there was a couple of missed videos. I think I missed, actually, I might've only missed one. I think I only missed one video during the last couple of weeks, if I'm correct, but I definitely ended up taking almost three weeks off roughly in July in some form or another uh, because I took a break and then I got sick, which is interesting. I always feel like that's your body's way of saying you've been not taking enough rest because I haven't had a cold of any kind in a long time. And this was just like neck up. It was like sinuses and like sneezing. You can still hear a bit of it in my voice, I'm sure. Uh, I never really got coughing, knock on wood. Uh, glad that that didn't happen. In the past when I've gotten a cold, if I, I'm coughing for like weeks, no coughing really, just like sinus stuff, fuzzy head, not feeling good, basic kind of cold. But <laughs> all things considered, it just forced me to take more time off because I couldn't really film because I was, you know, nasal and whatever. It was just interesting that that's how that worked out. I just, I, I, I think things happen for a reason. You know what I'm saying? So I think I obviously needed more rest and it was good for me, but it was a whole thing. It was a whole thing. Now, thankfully, before I got sick, Peggy and I had an opportunity to go see Amanda Marshall in concert. And I know like 80% of you at least are not gonna know who she is. But Amanda Marshall is like a pop singer, like top 40 type singer, I guess. I don't know how you classify, I'm terrible at classifying music. I would say like pop R&B maybe, I, I don't know. Uh, but anyways, she was really popular in like the I wanna say late 80s, early, probably early 90s, it must've been early 90s, in Canada specifically. She's a Canadian artist. But when Peggy and I were first getting to know each other, Peggy introduced me to her music and we got real sappy about it and she would like sing me her songs and we would, we just totally both started listening to a lot of Amanda Marshall together. So it's very much a part of like the origin of our relationship. And I've loved and know the words to all of the songs ever since. But Amanda Marshall made her last CD or album in like 1993. <laughs> Is that right? 1993, yeah. So when I discovered her, her music was already over 10 years old. And I've been listening to it ever since. Amazing, love it. But anyway, she did a comeback tour. So she was only in Vancouver for one showing, one event, one night. I haven't been to a concert with Peggy in years, but we went to the Amanda Marshall concert and it was incredible. I got a shirt, look at, I got merch. Look at, so Amanda Marshall, it's all wrinkly because I just literally pulled it out of the the, the dryer. But look, let this dark horse run, which if you know her music, I'm covering my microphone. If you know her music, you know, you know. But that let this dark horse run song was basically like the anthem of Peggy and my relationship. That and Will You Marry Me or just called Marry Me. There's, I love all of her music. Anyway, she's saying all the stuff that was important to us, which made me really happy. And just going to a show and like having like a date night out 
was such a nice treat. We hadn't done that in so long and it just felt really good. So that came in at the tail end of my break, like right before my birthday. Also, I had a birthday in July. Uh, so I turned 46. <laughs> I have to do the math in my head like every time, but I turned 46. So I think I, I think we had a nice dinner out with our son, John, but now I literally cannot remember. But Peggy and I <laughs> discovered a new Mongolian grill a restaurant nearby, which we loved. It was so good. I cannot wait to go back. And we also went to another, uh, you know, tiered afternoon tea, the fancy tea, where you go and you get the, the little mini sandwiches and the scones and the desserts. And it was lovely. So we did that my birthday weekend. The last thing that I have on my memories list, and I'm sure there was stuff in June that I've long since forgotten, but the last thing I have on my memories list to talk about was that I spoke at Divination Pride. This is a online or virtual conference put on by the World Divination Association and I got to present. Uh, so I did a really cool spread called Clean Your Mirror. I will probably share it with y'all at some point but it was really fun to go through that and spend that time with people and just sort of be a part of the conference. It was really, really fun. So I did that in July, had had just an amazing time. So that was lovely. If you get a chance to check out the virtual conferences that the World Divination Association does, they're usually really good. There's a variety of content. So just in this last conference, there was stuff on runes, on Kipper, on Lenormand, on tarot, um, as well as other topics as well. It kind of runs the gambit. It's not just tarot focused, but it's divination focused, which is really Really nice. So it's really fun. There's great speakers. So I had a fun time presenting at that. And I think that's it that I've got written down for memories. YouTube, listen, I got caught up on my watch later list because I was not well and I uh, missed a couple of days of my day job. So I watched all of the YouTube. Could I tell you now what I watched? No, not really. So I'm very sorry to everybody's videos who I watched and I don't even know if I commented in the last month or so. I watched a lot of tarot tube and I watched a lot of YouTube like in general but I did a bad job of keeping track of what I was watching and I did a lot of comfort watching. You know, the kind where you like put on tarot tube or YouTube and like I queue up in my watch later list. That's how I keep track of the videos I wanna make sure I don't miss. And I just sat there and played that list and like cuddled up and had snacks and like played video games and it was really chill and, and lovely. I did a lot of that in July especially, but I didn't keep, I didn't keep track but I, I'm sure I watched a lot of really good stuff. I just literally don't remember, except right near the end of July, I, uh, I'm a member of Danny Mystic's channel membership, which channel membership is something that I really enjoy, both being a member of and running my own membership. It's a really nice way to have like a more intimate, sort of small social media, version of whatever social media platform. So like in this case, YouTube, YouTube membership gives you like that opportunity to have kind of a small little close, what am I trying to say? Like a more intimate environment within this like larger social media world. It's just really nice. Anyways, I'm getting off track. Danny Mystic, Miss Danny Mystic did launch the most incredible thing as part of her membership where she is showing people, she is teaching her playing card method. Now, listen, when I tell you I turned into the kind of fangirl, as if I have never spoken to Danny personally ever in my life, I left the most almost embarrassing, like I'm almost embarrassed. I'm not because I, I meant every word of it, but like I'm, I, I gushed like a 13 year old at a New Kids on the Block concert when I saw that video because, and, and, and I apologize that this is a membership thing, but I definitely, encourage the value is there. I definitely encourage you to check out Danny's membership, but this, she's starting a series teaching her playing card divination method. When I tell you, cause she got a summer cold too. When I tell you that she has done the first video while she wasn't feeling hundred percent and that I made four pages of notes in this like 35, 40 minute video, just on what she had to say about playing card, like suit colors and like how she reads just the colors and the individual suits in general mostly just colors. When I tell you, I felt like at the end of that 40 minute video, I could answer almost any question just on the suit colors of playing cards based on this one video. I, I'm not kidding. I was such, I had such a fangirl moment. I like sent her a glide message and I was like, this is incredible. I literally, I 13 year old at New Kids on the Block. That was totally the vibe. And I say that as somebody who went and saw New Kids on the Block when I was 13 in case that wasn't obvious, but it was so good. So I'm just saying if you are not a member of Danny Mystic's membership uh, and you're curious about the playing card method or her specific um, sort of approach to playing card methods, divination or whatever, uh, 
please just go check it. It was so good. Just go check it out. It was so good. It was so good. And she's going to continue the series and I am like living for it. I was, it was the kind of thing where when I was done watching, I was like literally looking around me for a playing card deck so I could immediately practice. It was just so inspiring and so good. And again, I still sound like a fangirl, so I'm going to shut up now, but just trust me, it's amazing. So if you get a chance to check that out, check it out. Like I literally sent Danny and Glide and was like, I am not just hyping you up because you're my friend. Like you don't understand how excited I am about this, but it was really good. Other fun things in July, obviously we had a lovely chat for three fat readers amazing always love getting together with my buds and um i have to say one of the funnest sort of happy accidents um was my hot takes in july which if you missed you probably should watch because it's very unique and uh may have started a new thing basically what happened in july is i went to go film my hot takes now the backstory of this which you'll see if you watch the video but i'm going to tell you anyway because i don't know how to shut up basically but the backstory of this is that I had already been live streaming for members for about seven hours. <laughs> I had already filmed my hot takes so that I could, you know, recoup after seven hours of live stream, which I love my long li live stream that I do for members every month. I love it. It's one of my favorite things. But I'm usually like my voice is usually a little tired after I usually don't do any filming after I do that stream. I usually save that filming for another time, do it before the stream, that kind of thing. Anyway, I had already filmed my hot takes video, but when I went to edit it, there was a problem. I can't remember what it was. Oh yeah, it was a focus issue. So I had to refilm it. Okay, fine. My voice is a little hash, but we're doing this. So I refilmed my hot takes. And then there was an audio issue. So I had, I wanted to still make the video. It's like one of my favorite one, ones to do in a month. So I, I came back on and I refilmed it a third time, but I brought alcohol. Um, if that's a triggering topic for you, I totally understand. Please give it a pass. But it was really kind of fun. By the time it was over, I was like, you know what? I, like this whole, I don't give a care. I don't have to like be, I, I was in my pajamas. I had like nothing on my face. I was just, I was so over it as far as the recording process was concerned that I just let my freak flag fly and it was awesome. So I think after reading the comments and y'all's reaction to that video, I may just have to make hot takes day the day that I have a cocktail. Cause let me tell you, I don't really drink at all. <laughs> but I do enjoy a good glass of wine or the occasional cocktail. And I just may have to make that the special occasion every month in which I have a cocktail. Because it was really fun to just go in and be a little more relaxed. Not that I'm not relaxed when I film, but the vibe was different. But anyways, it was a lot of fun for me and uh, may have shifted the way that I do hot takes. I just called it tipsy takes. We might just call it that from now on. There are a couple little developments that I want to share. Uh, first, Peggy started a tarot channel. Um, I think I haven't checked to see if it's okay if I share it yet. Um, I will ask her, but I think it's okay. So if it's okay, you'll see this. And if it's not okay, you won't see this. But uh, I have a link down below. It is called Peggy Does Tarot because of course we have Peggy Sews. So now we have Peggy Does Tarot. Um, she's been really enjoying doing readings and a lot of that kicked off from her doing some channel takeovers here. And she just wants to make lots of tarot videos. And I am not gonna complain that my wife is going down the tarot YouTube rabbit hole. I think that's amazing. So if you've been enjoying her Friday readings, I think those are gonna be moving to her channel if they haven't already and I think she's going to be doing more and more live streams like tarot reading live streams and those are going to be over there too she just realized that one or two videos a month over here wasn't enough <laughs> she wants to make more so like I'm here for it if you're here for it if you like her reading style I think her channel is going to be largely reading focused and mostly on she's going to be focused on doing a lot of live streams I think because she really enjoys those so if you want regular Peggy readings go over there. I am long overdue to do a public readings stream over here on this channel. As I said, I do it for my members monthly, but I don't get a lot of chances or time to do public ones, but I'd like to do that soon. Maybe Peggy and I will come on together and do some readings or something like that. That would be really fun. But if you want to follow Peggy's tarot journey and her tarot reading channel, you can check that out at Peggy Does Tarot. And this is just, this is a weird announcement to make because we don't know what we're doing with it yet. Um, but Peggy and I have started a podcast YouTube channel. I Listen, I don't know. I don't know because we have so many things that we're doing and we're so busy, but we're both kind of excited about it. Uh, we, re we sort of repurposed my our old Peggy and Lisa Vlogs channel into, or Lisa and Peggy, yeah, what was our old channel called? Lisa and Peggy Vlogs is now called Lisa and Peggy Unleashed. <laughs> And our goal with it is that when we make episodes over there, we're just going to sit down. We've ordered some things to kind of make a pretty backdrop or whatever. We're just, we're fooling around. It's just for fun, but we're going to sit down and just chat and just be silly and talk and whatever and record it and do it on YouTube. And if we can manage to, to be rewatchable or re-listenable, then we will upload to like podcast platforms and just see, just see. 
but it won't necessarily be tarot focused over there. It's just going to be us doing our thing, being our normal dorky selves together and just spending time together and talking about random stuff. So that's what we're gonna be doing over there. I cannot even tell you when our first one will go up or how often they'll be going up or anything. This is something we just wanna do, like I said, for fun. We do a lot of tarot related stuff and we just thought it'd be fun to do something that's just us and just, you know, whatever. I'm sure tarot will come up because I literally eat, sleep, live and breathe tarot, but um, it's not a tarot focused space. But if you wanna see more of our antics, go subscribe over there. Or if you were previously subscribed to Lisa and Peggy Vlogs, you're now subscribed to Lisa and Peggy Unleashed. And yeah, no, no, no promises on what it's going to look like, but we'll see. We'll see how it evolves over time. And I think the only other thing to really mention as far as YouTube is concerned is that Peggy and I got another episode of helping you say yes to the deck out. This is where she and I sit together with somebody else virtually, like we have a virtual meeting and we help them pick a deck. So it's really fun. I, we have another one in August. And then I think the say yes to the deck after that is just going to be me again. I haven't done that in a long time. Peggy's like, when's the last time you said say yes to a deck? I'm like, well, I haven't because I've just been like buying all the things. And she's like, hmm, maybe we should reinstate that. <laughs> I was like, yeah, good point. So um, those are probably coming back. So that's it for YouTube things. Let's talk about magic. So other than a bunch of healing magic, actually, healing magic has kind of been the thing. I actually have a split screen, but I don't think I need it for this. So I'm going to switch over to split screen and show my table in a minute to show all the things. But I have to tell you, so my unicorn fam knows already. I can't remember if I talked about this. I think I did talk about this in my May show and tell, but I made, I went sort of all in on a deep dive on nettle as an herb. And it has been kind of life-changing and I, I don't mean to be dramatic I'm not somebody that ever pictured myself going the cottage witch aesthetic or going full herbalist aesthetic or like herbal witch or whatever not my vibe however the amount I have learned about nettle and the amount I have been blown away by the power of this plant I cannot understate I have been having the most incredible experience just making, just with this one product that I made, Peggy's been having an incredible experience. Our dogs have been having an incredible experience. Let me, let me just tell you. So I made a nettle oil out of, um, by, by doing a warm infusion of nettle. I shared this process with my members and the Magical Unicorn Tear and Up, and I turned it into a nettle salve, which this is my only, this is my least used one right now. Um, when I tell you this has become the household like miracle balm, I, I have used this as lip balm, as cuticle butter. I have put it on bug bites. I have put it on itchy spots. I have put it on skin irritations. I have used it to soothe um, inflammation. I, when I, maybe it's placebo, I don't know. But I tell you, anytime I put this on something, it gets better. That's what I know. And when I did my personal deep dive and, and homework on this plant, I just discovered a lot of really cool things about it. I'm not going to say that this is for everybody. I've already heard from, like Dustin, for example, has a bad reaction to nettle. It's going to depend. But I have drank the tea. I have made the oil. I have a vinegar that I've been using as a hair um, scalp treatment that I, well, vinegar with, with water. It's mixed up in a spray. Um, I have been nettle all the things and I'm still on nettle all the things. And I'm almost hesitant to get into any other plant because I have been so obsessed with nettle. And I don't know if it's just that I'm that one note, <laughs> but I feel like this has been such an incredible plant to introduce into sort of our daily lives. I kind of wonder if I had multiple plants like on the go at any one time, if one or more of them would get neglected, if that makes sense. Like I don't want to be so, I don't want to have like a whole apothecary full, well, maybe I do, but nettle has just been incredible. And I, I want to deep dive into another plant. I haven't decided what, it's probably going to be mugwort though. That's kind of top of my list to, to dive into next. Um, I've done a lot of work with mugwort. I'm familiar with it. And so I might do some mugwort related things. If you have an opinion on what plant I should maybe deep dive into next, let me know, but I will probably end up making an oil, a salve or a balm rather. And, um, but this stuff has been, it also smells really good, but this has been incredible in our house. Like we've already gone through, I, I had like a half tin. We've already gone through the half tin and we've gone through like a good chunk of one other full tin. And then we have this tin. <laughs> so we're going through it. And it's just, it's just, it's so lovely. It's so, so lovely. So the reason I put this in magic is because I did charge it with healing. Um, that was my intention with it was for it to be a healing balm. And I just feel like it's been very, very potent. So I haven't been this inspired, like 
by a type of like sort of really hands-on type of magic, like really, really inspired for a long time. Like there's lots of things that I do that I, I enjoy and get the benefits out of, but this just really knocked my socks off. So I'm still loving it and I had to mention it because it's amazing. So now it is time to talk about makeup and beauty things that I've been loving. So I am gonna put the split screen on so that we can see what I'm talking about. So I've used a lot of things in June and July. So if you wanna skip this stuff, I totally get it, but I wanna gush about the things that I have been loving. So first off, I did, probably because I wasn't feeling well, in June and July, I did a lot of, well, at least in July, I did a lot of sort of one and done eyeshadow looks that I really, really enjoyed. These are kind of go-to products for me. So I've probably talked about them before, but I'm gonna gush about them again. My favorite, well, Two of these are my all-time favorite one and done eyeshadow looks. But the first one that I wanna talk about is the Charlotte Tilbury. This is the, what are these called? Eyes to Mesmerize and my favorite shade. Oh, hello, there we go. My favorite shade is called Oyster Pearl. Let's see if it's gonna focus. Is it gonna focus? Hello? Oh, I have to bring it down a little bit. There we go. Oyster Pearl. So that took forever. This is like, I mean, you wouldn't, you would think I haven't used that much of it, but it's got this kind of like bronzy color to it. This, oh, you can kind of see it in the lid. It's almost like rose gold, like bronzy, I guess. But I love putting this all over. I just blend it all onto my eyes. And then I like to top it with something sheer and sparkly. And so my favorite thing for that is this, um, well, one of my favorite things, one of them is in a Wayne Goss palette that I've showed before, but the other, I don't think you can get this anymore, but it is a Sephora single eyeshadow called Twinkle Twinkle. And this literally, I've totally shown this on the channel before. Um, it's like, you can see, it's kind of like, it catches the light, but it's a really, really sheer sparkly color. I've got a little bit of hard pan because I use this a lot, um, but I love pairing these two or any sheer sparkly, shadow anything from like a pat mcgrath palette or like i keep looking up at my viewfinder i'm sorry but anything from like a pat mcgrath palette or anything like that sheer sparkly goodness wet look kind of eyeshadow over top of this oyster pearl mm, it's so good it's so good the other one and done eyeshadow that i freaking love and i don't know if you can get this shade anymore either i'm so sorry is color pops moonwalk so this is what it looks like uh, or what the container looks like. It is, I don't know if that's a lot number or what that is. I keep these screwed on like really, really tight because I'm worried it's gonna dry out. Oh, I've got a little bit of pan even in this. Look at that. There's a little bit of baby pan in there. Moonwalk is a, you can kind of see it there. It goes from like green, like, oh, move my hand this way. It goes from like green to like burgundy or red. It's really hard to describe, but it is so pretty. Oh my God, it's so pretty. I can put this all over my eyes, just this, nothing else, nothing in the crease, nothing whatever, and it just looks really pretty. I love this shade so much. Again, I don't know if you can even still get it. And then I really like Phytosurgeons' eyeshadows. They're much more understated, but they also have that sort of dual tone. Phytosurgeons is a small independent brand that's actually based in Vancouver. This is the shade Deeply Rooted. I have like two or three of these, I think. And I don't know if you can tell, but this goes, oh, I'm gonna like swatch this because you can't tell. When you stick your, when I tell you, when you stick your finger in this, it feels like you're rubbing a candle. Like there's, it doesn't feel like any colors coming off. And then as soon as you like show your finger, like look it, like you can see, it's kind of like almost like a pewter to red. Let me just put this on the back of my hand because I literally cannot look. Like it's hard to describe what it does, but like it does this with a brush too. But it's like brown, but it's got that like bit of like a, a pewter shift. It's not showing up very well in my hand. It's mostly, you can see it like better, I think on my finger, look at, see how it's got that like pewter shift? It's so cool. Okay, I'm gonna literally, I bet you this is what makeup YouTubers do too, is I bet they wipe it off on like their pants or their shorts or whatever. I'll deal with that later in the laundry. Well, actually more accurately, Peggy will deal with that later in the laundry. It's fine. Anyways, that is the Phytosurgeons uh, Deeply Rooted. Love Phytosurgeons. Um, my favorite things from them are their blushes, but this eyeshadow is really nice. Staying on staying on the theme of eyeshadow, uh, the other eyeshadow palettes I enjoyed in, or that I, the only other eyeshadow palette I used in July is the um, Natasha Denona Mini Nude Palette. So that's what this looks like. This is warm. I haven't, I don't have a lot of warm toned eyeshadows I feel like anymore, but this is really warm. And this color right here is like a bronze kind of burgundy shifty color. You can kind of see it. Clearly you can tell I like shifty colors. I really need to get some independent like multi-chrome eyeshadows or something because I think those would be really fun. But 
I'm a little worried that they have a lot of metal in them. Does anybody know? I'm like, I have a really, really sensitive, um, I'm really sensitive to nickel and some metals. So I'm just nervous that like, like those multi-chromes are going to have like the kind of metals that might irritate my eyes. I don't know. But like, oh my God, it's so pretty. Anyways, this was really fun. I did a copper eye look, um, but this was really easy. It, did, it wasn't overwhelming. And when I wasn't feeling good, I just wanted simple eye looks. So July, I, I used this and those one and done shadows and that's it. But in June, I used my Anastasia. Asia, Beverly Hills, and ABH, whatever. Nouveau palette. This is such a pretty one. This has got a lot of like really pretty greens. Like I love this color. You can tell I've used that one a lot. And that color, actually can, I've pretty much used every shade. The only shade I can never freaking figure out how to incorporate, like I have incorporated it, but I'm not sure I love it, is that lavender, which is kind of the whole reason I bought this palette in the first place was I was like, oh, it's such a pretty matte purple, but like it doesn't feel like it matches any of the other colors here. Like I have put it in the crease and tried to use this peacock shade, I think, and done something with it that way, or maybe this li lily shade. I don't know, but it was called Wisteria and it, it's pretty and I wanted it, but like, I don't really ever know what to do with it. I, I suppose I could do like a matte purple all over. I don't know, if you're a makeup person, what would you do with that matte purple? Or if, especially if you have this palette, I would love to hear because it's a really pretty palette. I like, oh, look, it kind of matches my shirt. Um, I like this color story in general and I love greens, as you can tell. So I was really suckered in by the, the green shades in here, but it's really pretty. And I love this. I even love this, like this fleur shade, this like kind of peachy, it's almost like a, like a brownie peach kind of, or a rusted, I don't know, this brick kind of color. I don't know. It's really, it's quite pretty. I like all the colors. I haven't, obviously, I don't think I've used Belle at all, actually, or Isle. Now I want to swatch those. Why haven't I used these? <gasps> They're really pretty. Okay, hold on. I'm probably gonna have to wipe this on my pants again, but let's just see. Yeah, see, those are, oh, look it. That's like an olive metallic. Oh, why haven't I worn that? Ooh, that's almost got a little bit of that moonwalk vibe. Oh, that's so pretty. Okay, wiping that on my, oh, oh, this is going to be a laundry nightmare later. Okay, anyway, there's probably a better way to do this. I probably should bring like a wet wipe or something if I'm going to be swatching eyeshadow during my videos, but whatever. It's fine. The last makeup thing, the other things, there's more beauty, but the last makeup thing is the red lipstick y'all were raving about. I cannot remember what video I wore this in, but it was the first time I've worn red in the last few months. And y'all went nuts, but I, this shade is discontinued. So I have another shade that I think is similar that I got to kind of like replace it, but it'll take me a while to use this up. This is Becca's Ultimate Lipstick Love, which is a lovely lipstick formula. And this color is called Tan Tangy. Tangy, I almost said Tangy because that's what I always say in my head, but it's Tangy. And it's a little bit of an orange-based red, but it reads more like a blue-based red. I don't know how to describe that. It's a very much a true, a true red. My other reds that I have lean a little bit blue or pink even, I would say. But this one, it was really fun to wear. So I will definitely be wearing this again. I actually put it in my favorites basket and forgot and then was reaching for other reds. But I do really, really like this one. And it is a satin slash cream formula, so it's not very matte. But I can blot it and then like put it on in multiple layers and I get kind of a matte-like effect with it. Before I talk about the perfume oil and the nail polish that I've been wearing in July, it's important to introduce the theme. So I had decided I was going to kind of do an Alice in Wonderland themed July. This is gonna be relevant to the perfume, the nail polish, and later to decks and books and such. But I really wanted to kind of go all in with Alice, partly in honor of the gorgeous Alice fabric that Peggy and I picked out because she's gonna be making me an Alice in Wonderland quilt that I'm very excited about, like a lap quilt, but it's gonna be kind of a big lap quilt, but still, lap quilt, very excited, Alice in Wonderland themed. And I always think of Alice in Wonderland in the summer. So I wanted to go all in with the theme. So I wore no less than three uh, Alice in Wonderland, and I'm still wearing Alice in Wonderland themed um, perfume oils from Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab. I'm gonna share them with you from order to my least favorite to my most favorite. So my least favorite of the Alice themed oils that I have from Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab's Be Pal is uh, Drink Me. Drink Me is literally, they tried to make a scent that matches the description of the drink me like potion in the Alice stories where there's like hints of like sweet things, but also savory things. Like, I think there's supposed to be a bit, a little bit of Turkey in here, <laughs> not lying. It's really interesting and it does smell very foody and I like foody type scents, gourmand scents, I guess you could say. I do enjoy wearing this and the sweet is more than the savory for sure, but there's something just slightly so unique about it that sometimes I don't think about reaching for this one. So I did, but I did wear it a fair amount in uh, July. So love that. My next, this one I'm, I, is almost my favorite. It's so good, but I had to have it because of the theme, but I also have um, Eat Me, Eat Me 
Uh, so I have drink me and I have eat me. Um, do not actually drink and eat these, obviously. But eat me literally smells like cake. Yep, it literally smells kind of like buttery cake. It's like vanilla-y and like, it's just, it's delicious. Uh, love this, love this. And it pairs really well. I have a very chocolatey, do I have one or two? I have one very chocolatey perfume uh, from, this, from these guys and it layers so nice with this. It's literally like fudge and cake, like a chocolatey, fudgy, frosted cake. So good. But my absolute most favorite scent from that collection from BPAL is it's Alice. And I actually have two scents that are very similar because I love this one so much. Alice is literally smells almost exactly like the rose jam scent from Lush. It smells like candied roses. I'm sure I've talked about it on the channel before. I recently got another scent from them. I cannot remember the name of it, but it's from their Valentine's or Lupercalia collection from last year that also is sweet rose scented. I, there's something about sweet roses that I love. I'm not normally a very rose scent person, but oh my God, I love Alice. So I've been wearing these off and on all month and really, really enjoying them. Okay, I'm gonna try and race through the nail polish kind of fast because I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I have eight because I usually change my color weekly and that was the case through June and July. Even when I was sick, I still painted my nails. Um, so let's, let's get into it. So uh, most of them are Moon Cat nail polishes, which I have been obsessed with, but I did start off the month with a couple of other brands because I've been neglecting my other polishes, polish brands since I discovered Moon Cat and um, I wanted to show them some love and I had some gorgeous colors to play with. So I pulled out my Holo Taco Pink Fizz. This is from their um, pastel holographic collection. It's a really pretty linear hollow that's like pinky lavender. You can really see the rainbows. Oh, it makes me happy. Anyways, this is a really pretty color. I loved wearing it. Um, no complaints. I love hollows. I love linear hollows. They're gorgeous in the sun. So if you're going to wear like a linear holographic nail polish, wearing it in the summer when the sun can hit it, oh, the best. I keep bending over to put things down and I'm not going to probably be able to edit all of those out. So you might see me bending down. Anyways, and then uh, this is by JM, no, Fair Maiden, FM, Fair Maiden. And it's called Even Miracles Take a Little Time. This is the Cinderella themed polish that they put out for Polish Pickup, which is an indie nail polish, like monthly themed collection thing that you can purchase from. Here's the thing though. I really like polish pickup. It's a lot of fun, but I get dinged with customs when I order from them. So I'm trying not to anymore. Um, but this is a gorgeous color. So if you saw me with anything like this on my nails, although I didn't get to film with all of these colors, I don't think, but most of them, I think I filmed at least something. That's what it is. It's this ethereal Cinderella slash fairy godmother themed polish by Fair Maiden. And it's so pretty. I think I found my new favorite polish color. I'm always trying to find this kind of shade in anything because it's my favorite color of life. It's a pinky purple color. When it was a crayon in the Crayola box of colors, it's called Orchid. Um, but anyways, I always am trying to find it in nail, like I said, in nail polish and cosmetics, etc. And I had gotten something from Mooncat that I thought was going to be it, but it was a little too like pink or maybe it was a little too purple. It was a little too purple. But this one, this one does it. It's a cream and it's called Lost Polaroids. And oh my gosh. See, you, it almost is the same color. Well, that's purple, I guess. I don't know. I don't ever know how to describe this. This looks purple on camera, I feel like, but it's a pinky purple. Do you, does, does somebody see it? Do you know what I'm getting at here? Are you picking up what I'm laying down? But Mooncat's creams are lovely. I love them. And I feel like cream nail polish is like, they're all kind of the same, but they're not. And this is so good. The only other color that uh, reminds me of this, the one that I've been trying to replace, I guess you could say, is by Guerlain and it's called Lilac Belt and it was limited edition and I don't wanna pay the kind of prices I would need to get, pay to get more of it. And it's such a small bottle too. Um, but this is a lovely formula. I loved it, it was it was fun. Also, do you see this gorgeous butterfly? <laughs> Peggy found this fabric. Um, this is my mouse, also a favorite, by the way, the uh, Logitech Lift, but anyways. Um, Peggy found this fabric and I snurked one of these um, cloths. It's a whole diamond shape with this mandala of butterflies. So you can only see one of them, but anyways, that's also a favorite. Um, there may be one left in the shop when this video comes, goes up, but I would be stunned if there is. So they might be all gone, sorry, but it is what it is. Peggy's shop is always linked down below. So if you're looking for bags or reading cloths, she always has beautiful things, check it out. Anyways, back on track. Lilac, not lilac belt. Lost Polaroids is what this shade is called. I don't even know if I said. And then this came from the, um, uh, dinosaur collection that Mooncat put out. And this color is called Pangea. I don't know if I got any videos with this, but oh my gosh. Okay, so it only looks red, weirdly, in camera. But if I shift it just right, will you get to see any of the other colors in it? It's like, what if I hold it here? Can you see? No, it just looks red. Okay, to my eye, this is a red, orange, 
yellow lime green multi-chrome. <laughs> and you cannot see it at all in this picture. It literally just looks red. So um, I will have this shade linked down below. If you really wanna see what this looks like, go check. I cannot get at any angle for those other colors to show up. If you wanna see what it looks like, go check the link and look at the, the pictures. But this is a matte finish polish, which of course I could put a glossy to top coat on it, but it looked really cool as a matte polish. It'll also look really cool as a glossy polish. So I may try it with a glossy top coat on it, but yeah, it's called Pangea. Let's see if that'll show up. Pangea. Anyways, so fun. I said I was going to race through these and I am really not, but I have no timer. So I have no idea how long I've been talking. Um, so this may be a long video, but if you're here, you're used to that. Probably. This next one is the last one I think I wore in June. I think these were all June polishes. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure these were all June polishes. This last one is called Poseidon's Prize. I've probably shown it on the channel before. It's so pretty. See this one too. It looks kind of straight green kind of in ca on camera, but it is a beautiful turquoise and see this shimmer this is a magnetic so what happens is if you hold a magnet i should have brought one to show you um you get this really three-dimensional look because you can get like a cat eye look the, the nail polish i'm wearing now i can't talk the nail polish i'm wearing now has that effect but it's much more subtle um like this nail here i'm going to show you what polish this is you can kind of see that cat eye effect happening that's what this does but it's all blue greens and so it's just a gorgeous very watery effect. It's so pretty. Total mermaid nail vibes for sure. And that brings us to the Alice collection that Mooncat launched in uh, late June, I think. So of course, going with my Alice theme, I had to wear Alice themed polish. And i am only worn three of the four that I got. The fourth one I'm probably going to wear next week. Um, so I'll continue this in next show and tell. But this month I wore... Um, and I don't think I got any videos with this one, but this one is spectacular. It's called A Very Merry Unbirthday. And this one, oh, it looks blue. Oh my God. Okay. It just prop, trust me. If you are into nail polish, you're going to want to go, go click the actual links that I put in the description to look at these. This is a blue, like a very vibrant, like look at this next to this butterfly. It is a vibrant blue, purple, like neon bright purple duochrome with pink sparkles in it. And it's just not getting picked up on camera. It's not doing it any justice. It's so pretty. And this was the one I took a risk on because I was like, is this too vibrant for me? But like, what am I saying? I love vibrant nail polish. But this was so fun to wear. I don't think I got any videos of me wearing it though. And then I wore Mad Hatter. Mad Hatter is another multi-chrome kind of gel. Oh, see, it's doing it. Okay, this one is turquoise to purple with lots of multicolored sparkles, but mostly I would say pink and green sparkles. Why can I not get these to show up? Pro oh, that's so irritating. Anyways, it's really pretty. Um, this is also a magnetic, so you also get the cat eye effect on this. Oops, on this one. It's a bit of a jelly too, so it has this like depth to it when you put it on your nails. I don't know why I said I was going to go through this quick. I'm clearly not. And then lastly, this is what I'm wearing right now. This is Cheshire Cat. So I guess technically this is a August polish, but oh, it's so pretty. It's also magnetic. It's purple with like lots of like, oh gosh, orange, yellow, green, maybe glitter. I don't know if I can get the glitter to pick up, but you can see in my nails kind of what's happening. It's a little chipped because I've been wearing it now for over 24 hours, but it's real pretty. Hello. I should just hold the bottle so you can kind of see what it does. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Anyways, when you put the magnet on this one, you get like a pink stripe. So you can kind of see that pink stripe in my nails from where I held the magnet. Oh, so pretty. Anyways, so that was Cheshire Cat. So this was Mad Hatter, this was Cheshire Cat, and then I had a very merry on birthday. The shade I haven't worn yet is called Alice, and it's real pretty, and I'm gonna wear it next. So you'll probably see it in other videos soonish. That's it for beauty. I'm so sorry that we were here for so long, but also not really sorry because I really like talking about it. And this is my only outlet to talk about like makeup and beauty and stuff because like Peggy doesn't want to hear it. So like, who am I going to talk to about nail polish and eyeshadow if I don't do it here? So sorry, not sorry. It's kind of where we're landing with that. Um, let's see. So other things to talk about TV and movies. So did I see any movies in June and July? I don't remember. And I feel like I should. I feel like I went to the movies, but maybe I didn't go to the movies. Didn't I see something? Oh, I went and saw The New Little Mermaid in June, I think. I think it was June. Maybe I already talked about that. Maybe it was May. Y'all, I can't remember anything anymore. But TV-wise, I have been doing a rewatch of the original Charmed. Um, 
I've been loving the heck out of that. That has been wonderful and so nostalgic and so fun. I've kind of abandoned Angel. Um, I really enjoyed my Buffy rewatch, but for some reason, Angel always seems to lose my interest and I'm not sure why, but I actually don't think I've ever fully watched all of Angel before. I like, I just keep getting distracted and then I like stop watching it. I don't, I don't know. So I've hopped over to Charmed. That's what I'm watching right now. So it's been all about nostalgic rewatches for me this year, I feel like, but I'm really enjoying it. Because I had a birthday in July, I feel like there's a ton of stuff I could show in random, uh, the random section here. But the only thing I think I'm gonna talk about for now, because I've got a recent deck roundup video coming up soon, so I'll be able to talk about new decks and things like that then. But I think what I'm gonna talk about is the quilt that Peggy made. So she made a Bridget's Cross themed, like sort of designed quilt. So it's made up of lots of multicolored strips on a background and it's in the shape kind of of a Bridget's Cross. That's kind of what we named it after she came up with the design. So I am loving that quilt, it's sitting on the couch. It is warm here right now but there have been a couple of cooler or rainier days where I've been able to snuggle up under it and it's been lovely. So I will insert a photo so you can see what that looks like, but it's lovely and it was definitely a favorite from the last couple months. And that brings us to books and there are two that I wanna talk about that I'm gonna show you off here. The first should come as no surprise, but I have been reading again, my copy of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. This is such a lovely version of this book. So this one is the, I haven't filled in the book plate. This one is the one, the Canterbury Classics uh, illustrated version. So you get um, the original illustrations, which are just lovely. It's got like colored pages in this like kind of funky sage greeny color. But yeah, you have, look, there's the mock turtle. You have the illustrations. Um, it's just a really lovely version of the stories. And I just enjoy rereading this about once a year. So I'm currently doing a reread right now. It kind of got back burnered a little bit because of the Unicorn Fam uh, book club book, which I'll be talking about more in my August show and tell but I am still working through it and still really, really enjoying it. I probably will not think to mention this again next month, so I thought I'd mention it this time. But the book that stole my heart in July was actually sent to me as a present from a friend and it absolutely delighted me. And I don't think it'll even fit in here, but it is called Minnie and Hardly and the Big Adventure by Katherine Rayner. It is the winner of the Kate Greenway Medal Green away metal. I don't know what that means, but I can tell you that this book, let me get my mouse out of the way, is so beautifully illustrated. It's a story about these two little unicorns who wanted to be big and it is so cute. And can I tell you, I have not read a children's book in like this kind of picture book in so long. This was such a feast for my senses, for like my eyes, the art. I. This was such a like decadent little treat. I may want to scoop up a few more children's books like this because I am such a fan of art and story. And this is this was just such a lovely, lovely experience. I just, I feel like I could just keep saying lovely, but it just, it's kind of indescribable how enjoyable this was. And this came in on a day when I was really under the weather and I just curled up with a cup of tea and this story and it literally made my whole day better. And I just, look at their faces though. They're so cute. I just can't. Okay. Anyways, I love this. I truly, truly love this. Look at this. They're so little. Look at their little. Oh my God. They're so cute. Anyway, so that's called Minnie and Hardly and the Big Adventure. So now it's time to talk about decks and I, I have so many thoughts to share and I don't even know quite where to start. So I'm gonna be in kind of a random order. These might not be in like the order I use them or anything, but I feel like this will, I'll just have to do it the way that makes sense. So most recently, I actually pulled back out the Ocean Dreams Oracle. I've really struggled with this. If you saw my video about everything in my purgatory drawer, then you know this is what I've struggled with, but I've been really trying to see if I can build a relationship with it. And I pulled, I, what I really enjoyed doing, let me just see if I can, I revisited this when I wasn't feeling well. And I just pulled this out and I set it on my altar and, or on my table here. And every few days I would just pull a card for myself and just like read the message, just really do use this deck in a really slow, kind of meandering sort of way. And it ended up being really quite a lovely experience. So I think I just need to let go of thinking of this like a traditional oracle and think of it more like a meditation deck or like a reflection deck, something where I'm not expecting it to be divinatory so that when I get things like Lemurian waters, I don't immediately like have this visceral reaction to it and instead read what the guidebook has to say because I got some really lovely messages. And the first time that I did this, the message I got was all about like taking care of myself and like healing and like, 
you know, just feeling better. And that was a day I was really not feeling well. And it was just, it just felt really on point. But the guidebook has just really lovely reflections. And then there's like a kind of a question that could be used, I suppose, as a journal prompt. But I actually got a lot out of working with this, like with the guidebook as like a system, as like a standalone unique thing. I really quite enjoyed it. So I'm just keeping this out on my table for now. And when I feel called, I'm pulling a card and starting to slowly maybe build a relationship with it. We'll see if it lasts over time, but I am so magnetically drawn to the artwork that I'm really committed to trying to see if I can find a place for this in my practice, which isn't really how it should go. Like, I feel like it should go like where you know where it's gonna fit in your practice or you're really inspired to use it. This has been definitely a deck that has had to woo me and is still wooing me. So we will see where we end up, but I'm kind of happy letting it woo me for the moment. Did I say woo too many times in my sentence? I don't know, but I'm gonna put that back up on my table here. Now, in June, I, om I pretty much worked exclusively with the Tarot of a Witch's Garden. I mean, when I tell you I've used this deck so much and when we had our member reading event in uh, July, I had this deck and it was one of the most requested for me to use for people's readings. And it just does not disappoint. It is absolutely breathtaking. The artwork is just, it's indescribably beautiful. It is very well done. I love the way that the messages come through in the cards. I, the whole time I worked with this, did not notice the typos at all. Um, I did that little correction when I, I think I talked about that more, showed it in my recent deck roundup when I got this deck in. I love this deck. Now it's been kind of coming in and out of stock. So somebody will have to let me know. If you think of it, let me know. If you get one of the ones after some of the recent restocks, if the typo has been corrected yet, I can't imagine it will have been yet, but this is one of those decks that just, it swept me off my feet. And from the moment I pulled it out, I did not want to stop using it. So it was like just me in this deck. In fact, I worked only with this deck without even an Oracle for like, I think two or three weeks. I just didn't want to use anything else. I was so attracted to this and just so wanting to use it. And when I used it for member readings, it just, it never let me down it's got, it goes its own way in places. It follows the RWS, but it doesn't always stick just to the RWS composition for the scenes. So you get a little something different here and there, but it's enchanting. It is so enchanting to look at. I just, I just really love it. And I'm very drawn to this storybook style of art. Um, and it's also such a cozy, comfy shuffle. Like I keep talking about it, but like, it's got this kind of like squish to it. I don't know how else to describe it. Like it's got the linen, so it, it glides nicely, um, but it's not perfect. I've got some creases in my cards. It's, you can see there's some wear and tear already from all the use it's gotten, but it's such a physical, a physically enjoyable experience to shuffle it and to use it that its little flaws don't bother me at all. And I love its artwork so, so, so much that I just, I just don't want to put it down. I've just really been having the most incredible experience with it. So I've made myself move on to other things and I'm enjoying those too, but um, I spent so much time with this in June. Again, almost exclusively this deck. Oh, and the guidebook, which I had gushed about before because I did a whole full video on this. The guidebook is incredible. You get like an invocation that I found myself often copying these down into my journal um, and getting so much out of these little like four, four sentence, like little invocations or phrases that are associated with every card. You can totally use each one of these like a little spell all by itself. There is a very witchy sort of magical overtone to this deck that gives it more layers than just read a card and like interpret its meaning. There's more to that, to this book than that. And I just really appreciate how well done this guidebook was and how well done the deck is. It's just the artist and the, the deck creator and the author, Sasha Graham, did out of the, out of, just uh, uh, speechless. Such a good job. Such a good job. Really an incredible deck. When I paired it, though, I paired it with the Song of the Grandmothers um, Oracle. This deck, I still love this deck so much. Um, I can't think of another, like, deck that could do this job um, for me that this one does. It, it gives me that comforting grandma type energy but I also get a bit of nature and these lovely haikus and it just never fails to just deliver the message that I need when I need it. This is a really really good one if you have been looking for a deck to operate much like I use the um, out of print guardian angel tarot. The kind of deck where you can pull and get like a little bedtime reading this one is really really good for that. I used it a lot in June and I often used it separate from the, the Terror of the Witch's Garden, but occasionally I did pair them and I thought they paired really nicely. I also think this would pair really nicely with the Healing Waves Tarot if you have that, 
or other sort of nature-based decks, but I really like this one. It's, it's, it's a lovely, lovely deck. So yeah, the guidebook is fantastic. I love reading the messages in the guidebook and I just love working with it. This next pairing, I think I only worked with these, I wanna say for, I, I worked with them, I feel like I worked with the Tear of the Witch's Garden for like a month, but it might have, maybe I worked with it end of May into, I can't remember, because I think I worked with this pairing for a good couple of weeks, but maybe it was only a week. Anyway, I worked with the Fountain, oh my gosh, this is, this is like the sixth time I've done that. This is not the Fountain Tarot. This is the Spacious Tarot, but for some reason I keep wanting to call it the Fountain Tarot, which is really interesting to me, and I think it's because this deck and the Fountain Tarot both have a similar energy to me. I, I think it's because there's sort of a an, a calmness about both decks. They both have this like soothing color palette. This is actually the Spacious Tarot and its expansion. I did a whole video about these. I find these such a delight to use. I use them in member readings again and really, really, really enjoyed myself with them. It's got this more minimal style art, but it sort of slows me down. I, I think I've talked about that before. It's got this calm energy to it. I love how these um, extra cards from the expansion work with the deck. I love pulling a Zodiac card. It's been really interesting to me to do that and see how it worked out. I paired this deck. Oh, I love that Sagittarius card. It's just, this is so good. And it's, it's a wonderful indie deck. Uh, I have no complaints. And it's one that like I really debated about. And I think I ultimately anti-hauled because I was worried it would be too like pippish in the minors, especially the wand suit. But I totally get the wand suit and I love working with it. And it doesn't feel strictly pippish. Like even look at this seven of swords and how you have the six all following the straight line. And then the seventh is like, no man, I'm going to do my way. Like <laughs> I'm doing it my way. There's so many things you can grab from these cards intuitively, even though they are less, the images are less full or less busy, but you get, I get so much from working with this. So I really, really enjoyed working with this and I paired it with the Animal Apothecary by Kara Elizabeth. This is so fun. I really, really, really got a lot out of working with this deck that I wasn't, I wasn't expecting it. So that's what the backings look like. This is a mass market deck and it's fabulous. I really love the keywords. I love the quirky art. I don't know why I have upside down cards. That's interesting. I love the quirky art. There's something about this that I feel like it just works really well with other things. I just really had a lot of fun with this deck and it worked. I found it worked very, very well with the spacious tarot. It just seemed to fit very nicely with it. There's been a, a bunch of other pairings that I've seen on YouTube with this deck, but it's such a different mass market oracle deck, particularly when you think about mass market oracle decks. This is very outside the box. Um, and this is a hay house, but for some reason, this card stock feels sturdier and much less warpy than other hay house decks I have played with recently. Like it's definitely got a little bit of a, a vertical bow in it, but it doesn't feel like it's doing that funky warping thing that some of the hay house decks have been doing for quite a while now. This one was fine. It was good to shuffle. Um, it doesn't have as many cards as tarot. It's only 44 cards. So maybe that's part of it, but it just feels the card stock feels a little snappier and a little less warpable <laughs> than their other decks. Really, really enjoying the animal apothecary. I need to find the perfect bag for it from Peggy's stash. Oh, oh my gosh. We can't have that. The box is upside down. Um, I have to find the perfect bag for it from Peggy's stash. I haven't yet. Uh, if you spot anything in her shop that hasn't sold yet, that looks like a good match, feel free to give me a, a tip about which one I should go steal. <laughs> I have to go digging again um, to see if I find one, but yeah, super fun. I don't think it's gonna come as any surprise given that I talked about having an Alice in Wonderland themed month that I worked with the Tarot in Wonderland um, all through July, basically. Uh, and when I tell you that this deck just knocked my socks off. First off, I have this sort of reject um, Peggy wrap that I adopted quite some time ago out of this fabric where it's like, I'll show you, it's like a it's like a standard one of Peggy's wraps. So it's a pocket, but it's got all of this, this is all Alice in Wonderland themed fabric. And then so is the inside, but it has like quotes from the stories. But this was a reject because the pocket came in way too um, deep. And so this little Llewellyn deck actually only goes to here, but I just kind of fold the whole thing over and wrap it up and it's, it's fine. But it was nice because I have been using this and just basically pulling my like three card spreads like all month long through July. 
love, love, love. And I'm not done yet. I'm still playing with this. I'm still enjoying it. So I'm still working with it. So my Alice in Wonderland theme is kind of carrying over a bit into August and that's totally fine. This is such a fantastic deck by Barbara Moore. Um, I thought that I was gonna get partway into the month with this and then wanna reach for my Baba Studios Alice. Uh, and I haven't yet, despite the fact that I was having this whole monthly theme uh, all about Alice in Wonderland, I just wanted to play with this one. Partly because I've so thoroughly been enjoying the way that the guidebook is formatted. I've loved the vibrant colors and the storybook style art. This, this version of Alice has really grown on me like a lot, a lot. I know that you all have requested a deep dive of this deck and I will do that, but I wanna continue working with it before I do. So I'm going to do that first, continue working with it, and then I will do a deep dive of this deck. But oh my gosh, have I been loving this so much. And I don't know that this gets a lot of airtime. I feel like it's kind of been neglected in the tarot world. But when I tell you this guidebook, I know I've talked about it before. I think I mentioned it in my recent deck roundup. But the guidebook is massive. I've never seen a Llewellyn guidebook this thick. <laughs> I was trying to think of a better word than thick, but like it, she's thick. Okay. That's just how it is. Um, she's real thick. So let me just show you, oh, let me get the, the deck out of the way. So it's massive. And like for every card, so here's the death card. You have the page here, a page here and a page here. So about three pages. And it goes like that, even in the minor. So let me go. This is the four of wands page, page, and a bit, maybe not quite as long, but definitely like page at least two pages for because what Barbara has done is very well researched this deck let me just say but for every card you get a quote from the Alice in Wonderland story and you get a whole blurb about that part of the story and how it connects to the card now some of these cards have feature characters in slightly different scenarios than what strictly happens it doesn't follow the book verbatim but there's a tie to the book for every card. Does that make sense? So even if the scene is in a scene you strictly saw, although many of them are, um, or, or read about in the, in the stories, it, it's very well done. It's very well done. I, I just, I have no complaint with any of the choices. I wasn't sitting here going, oh man, I like how they did it in the Baba, Baba Studios Alice Tarot better. Nothing, this just felt like its own Alice deck and it just, it did not disappoint. So I've been really, really enjoying this. Okay, there's a couple of other decks I wanted to highlight that I've been getting some good stuff out of in the last couple months. I like to do a reading about Peggy, about Peggy and I, that kind of thing. I do that reading usually on Fridays and I like to pull in a dragon deck. That may change sometime, but I really have been loving over the past couple of months using the Smoke, Ash and Embers. I've only got like two dragon decks, okay? I've got this one and the Dragon Tarot by Llewellyn. Um, this is what, I just really love this. I love this deck so much. It's everything a Three Trees Tarot dragon deck should be. It, I just really, really love it. I think sometimes this one doesn't get as much play as the Oak Ash and Thorn because it's more specific in its theming. And the Oak Ash and Thorn has like a more nature-based, um, animal-based, like no mythological creatures, I don't think, in the Oak Ash and Thorn. But oh my gosh, y'all, this dragon deck is so beautiful and it's such a treat to use it. I truly, truly adore it. Um, so I use this to pull cards about Peggy and love, 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 love it. And I like to pair it with a card, something to focus on like for the week or um, whatever with regards to our relationship, just something like nice, like a nice focus message. And I paired it a lot in the last couple months with, um, I think this is by, is it Denise Lynn? I forget. Um, I will have a link to it down below, but this is the power to surrender or power of surrender cards. And it's actually, it's really good. Like if you're looking for like something that's mass market that has some good kind of maybe shadow work or some good things to like really just assist in life, this is really lovely. And it's always like things you can surrender. And there's a little message right on the cards. There's no guidebook or if there is, I've put it away because I don't need it. I've been using these little messages. It's got that like old fashioned, old fashioned, like 90s Oracle look about it. But I really love it. I think the pictures are pretty but mostly I just really appreciate the method the the methods the messages I really appreciate the messages in here my poor voice is like not used to filming for this long so I'm gonna have to wrap this up soon but before I do two more decks um I just want to or two or three maybe maybe three <laughs> a few more decks I want to highlight because these are decks that really 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 stood out when I was doing my live member stream so again once a month 
It may have to turn into more because we're growing as a membership, but the Magical Unicorn Tier and up, I, I open it up for asking a question and then I answer those questions in a live stream and the live streams have been getting longer and longer, but I usually bring in like four or five decks. I let people know in advance what decks I'm gonna use and then you can request what deck you want me to use with your reading and it's been really fun and I've been trying to pay attention to the decks that sort of I get excited about reaching for during those streams or that I feel like people are requesting a lot. Now I have to say, when I brought Tarot of a Witch's Garden, that one was already, it stole the show for sure. So I'm not going to speak about it again because I already spoke about how awesome it is. But I'm going to highlight a couple of other decks that in June and July stood out in the members' readings to me. So the first of those is the Real Talk Tarot. This was a deck that I did not expect to be so fabulous, but it really is fabulous. Um, this really features a lot of like modern life. Um, it's a really affordable mass market deck. It comes in one of these kind of like flip open boxes. Um, this is fabulous, particularly in the high tech world that we live in. There's a lot of like social media in here. There's a lot of computers and tech that you see in this deck. It's got a lot of cool modern theming around it and it feels super relatable. Like there's just this feeling of like, oh yeah, this is totally the world that I live in. Um, originally I don't think I liked the art style. Like I wasn't sure I liked all the white around all the things and like how some things are partially colored and some things are still like line drawings. But I don't even notice that when I'm working in this deck because it reads so stinking well. Um, and this was a standout favorite for me when I did my member readings. I think I used this one in June and I loved it. And it worked just fabulously through the entire stream. It never let me down again. That, that really to me is the test. If I can pull out a deck, especially one that's new to me and get fabulous readings from it, like never feel like I'm like hiccuping or like having to think about what it's trying to tell me, but really just get like the most out of it. That's what this was like. It was so good. So that's the Real Talk Tarot. It is, again, super affordable, mass market, fabulous. And then in July, I would have to say the standout tarot was Zeke's Arcana. It wasn't necessarily the most requested, but it was definitely, I feel like, maybe the most fun one that I used um, in the stream. They were all good. I don't think there was a disappointing deck at all in July. Sometimes there is. Sometimes there's one that's like, oh, it didn't really read the way I wanted it to. But Zeke's Arcana, it's beautiful. Oh, did I put it back in order? Yes, I put it back in order because I want to do a walkthrough of this. So I've, after doing my member readings, I put it back in order. So I'll try to flip through some of the cards. But this is really different. It's really odd, but the color palette is everything to me. I love this color palette. I love the whimsy. I love the play, but also the kind of like subtly dark that you get in this. Subtly otherworldly, maybe not so subtly otherworldly but it's really special and I like how you get color theming for the suits so it's pretty easy to tell what suits you have on the table or in front of you. I never hiccuped with this and I thought I really thought I would have and man we always have it's always so interesting in the member live streams because we get these like repeating cards that show up for like everybody and there was there's always several I need to start making a note to like write down what are like constant repeating theme or constant repeating card is throughout those streams because it's so fascinating to me that I can pick up different decks, read for different people, read different questions and have these same cards or themes come up again and again and again and it happens every month and we all end up having this really cool conversation around it because we find that like person A's reading really helps person C who also got a reading who got had a similar message and it's really interesting to see that overlap and I love doing it. It's so fun and it's, fun. it's just fun to do that many readings. I think we did around 60 or 70 readings I think it was like 70 I think it was somewhere in the ballpark of 70 readings in the last in the last live stream and it was just it was awesome the other deck that I think really blew all of us away was the conscious creative consciousness healing oracle deck y'all this is so good it's really incredible especially and I, I actually read from the guidebook I don't ever do that when I read for other people but this has like really beautiful messages and a journal prompt. And so I wanted to share, I think I just read this top bit and the journal prompt bit when people would um, get this in their readings in addition to how I was interpreting it. But this feels like a very active healing deck. It's not just cards with soothing messages, soothing. It's not just cards with nice messages. It literally teaches you techniques, like he personal healing techniques through guided visualization. And the visualizations, I normally, I have a bit of an issue when a deck or a guidebook or a book in general gives me this really long scripted visualization because I feel like I have two options then. I can 
memorize it somehow and then take myself on it or I have to record my own voice reading the meditation and then play it back for myself and I find my own voice distracting. <laughs> like I don't want to listen to my own voice in a meditation. I've even tried changing the pitch of my voice and recording them before uh, but it's a bit of a hiccup for me. It's not something I enjoy but these, med these visualizations that are in here are very short. They're simple so you can read it and then do the visualization if you want but every single one of these cards has some sort of powerful like visualization that can help you energetically tap into the message of the card. And it's very, very in line with what would be helpful if you have um, childhood trauma, if you're doing any inner child reparenting, if you have past like big deep wounds you are working on healing, if you are sensitive or consider yourself an empath or a highly sensitive person, um, if you feel, if you're tender, if you're going through a tough time, gosh, I just feel like there's all these different kinds of boundaries in here, but there's cards here that can help you like ground and center. And it's really, really, really good. And um, this was not on my radar at all until I did the hot takes video and we were able to look at a bunch of the cards in the um, look inside feature on Amazon. And I just fell in love with it. And I don't regret this at all. This is one of my most meaningful purchases of 2023 it was it's really really been an exciting one for me and I love it and we really enjoyed using it in the member readings people really got a lot out of the messages um it was one of the ones that when I asked everybody at the end like what was your favorite from today's stream this was one of the ones that came up um repeatedly as a favorite so not only did I enjoy it but the people in the stream seemed to really enjoy it as well my, my lovely members so that's awesome okay I've probably talked for a good couple hours <laughs> I hope you enjoyed yourself. Um, I also wanted to say that I'm very sorry to anybody who gets anxious about the door behind me. I have to leave it open because Shayla comes and goes. And just so you know, the only person that jumps in and scares me is my wife. So um, hopefully it's not too distracting, but I have the best filming setup here. So I'm kind of addicted to filming here. Although sometimes I do still film in front of my window or on my bed or whatever, but I, I like the spot. So hopefully it doesn't, it doesn't become a deal breaker. Try not to look at the door, it's okay. Um, but yeah, Shayla's like a cat. You can't let, she, has, she won't decide in or out if I shut the door. She'll be like, I wanna come in, then I wanna go out, then she'll wanna go in, then she'll wanna go out. It's, it's, it's a problem. Anyways, my voice is going, so I'm done filming for the day, I think. Thank you so, so much for hanging out. As always, an extra, extra big thank you goes out to my unicorn family, my channel members, you all are the wind beneath my wings, but truly you are. Like, I know that's so cheesy. I always wanna think of something to say that's different, but really all I can say is thank you for your support. It means, absolutely means the world. To all of you who watch the channel, who subscribe, who've been watching me for years, thank you. Thank you for your support and thank you for your presence here. It really makes a difference. And I, I, I don't say that because it's routine. I don't say that because it's like what I think I'm supposed to say. I say it because my heart is so full of gratitude for all of you. And I just really appreciate the time that you spend watching my videos or interacting with them. It really just means more than you know. And I, again, I know I say that every time. Listen, my vocabulary apparently is somewhat limited, okay, about this, but I'm very grateful and humbled all the time that I get to do this thing that I love. And you all are the reason why. So thank you so much. And with that, until next time, may your magic always shine from the inside out. Bye.